Hello and welcome back to another video where I will be discussing the profitability of yet another crypto trading strategy. In this video I will continue with the strategies that are provided by the Fractrade developers. I will continue to do this until they are all tested or analyzed on their usefulness. Now before I continue, I have to admit that my schedule of posting one video a week this year was a little bit too ambitious. So I want to apologize for not keeping up to my own promises. However, this is not because I'm lazy, but I just have a lot of ideas in my head that I'm working out at the moment. And to give you an idea of what I'm working on, uh, of course these videos where I will test algo strategies for my bot. I am also adding a lot of content on my DutchAlgoTrading.com website and I'm improving the content that was already there. I am also adding separate premium content about starting algorithmic bot trading on my Patreon account for all my patrons that want to support my work. And to give you an example, I will soon post information on how to create your own algo strategy ranking spreadsheet. At the moment I am also working on a program that will fully automate the backtesting and ranking of the performance of these algo strategies you will see in these videos. And I am working on a special separate book for beginners in algorithmic trading. I have read some books on that subject already and noticed that they were also pretty much advanced from the start and all these books also expect that you already have some quant background knowledge. My book will be written for people that have no knowledge whatsoever, but are interested in algorithmic bot trading and strategy development, and I want to help them get on their way. I also have a lot of other ideas written down, which I will not mention yet, because it is a surprise for the future. So as you can see, there are a lot of things on my plate, maybe a little bit too much, but hey, you only live once. But let's end this section and start with the subject you are here for. I will go over the results of the test I did on the reinforced average strategy. And as said earlier, this strategy is located in the GitHub repository of the Fractrade developers. You can find this strategy by clicking here on these links. This strategy is created by GetWorgelmoot, so he gets all the credits of course. And this time he did his best to create an algo strategy that is a combination of the EMA and Bollinger Bands indicators at first sight. And also based on the name of this file it is probably an improvement or variation of the average strategy that was tested earlier by me. So let's just run over the code to see what he built. And by the way he indicates in the comments that this strategy does not perform well, but we will see about that. Let's begin with the default parameters each strategy for the Fractrade bot has. To begin with the ROI settings, the strategy will sell when there is a profit reached of 50%, no matter how much time it took. And the stop loss is set to sell the position if there is a stop loss reached of 20%. The strategy was originally built for the 4 hour time frame. I will test this on multiple time frames, so we will see if it performs better or worse on other time frames. And there is no trailing stop loss set, so moving on, nothing to see here. And here, based on this line, the strategy will also use the exit signal too. This will be set a little bit further in the code though. In the populate indicators function, the EMA and Bollinger bands are configured to be used in this strategy. There are two EMAs configured, the EMA8 and the EMA21. And this is the same setting in the previously tested average strategy. Here in this section the Bollinger Bands from the QtPyLib library is used with a length of 20 and a standard deviation of 2, which is pretty much the default setting for this indicator. Then here there is a small section which I think is the reinforced part of this strategy. In this section the following things occur. It calculates the new function variable resample interval by calling the time frame to minutes function to convert a given time frame to minutes and then multiplying it by 12. 
So for the 4 hour time frame this strategy was built for, the resample interval gets to be 4 times 60 times 12 equals 2880. Here it resamples the data frame to the resample interval by calling the resample to interval function. This will be then a new data frame called data frame underscore long. It computes the simple moving average of the resampled data frame's close price over the last 50 periods using the SMA function from the TA library. And then it adds a new column SMA to the data frame underscore long data frame. Finally, here in this line, it merges the original data frame with the resampled data frame by calling the resampled underscore merge function and fills any missing values in the merged data frame with the most recent non-missing values using the fill NA argument. And to give you an example, the data frame will look like this for each pair that is calculated. You can see in this example that on the 24th December, the close price was 16,836.12. Then this close price is resampled to be used over all the 4 hour time frame candles on the 25th. So in other words, the close price of the previous day time frame is used as a reference on all the candles on the lower time frame that is used on the next day. Here the 4 hour time frame. And do not forget that the 50 SMA is calculated over that resampled close price. One drawdown of this method however is that if I use this exact strategy on lower time frames, this resample calculation uh, will also be get broken. Or at least it uses the resampled close price of the time frame that is 12 times larger. Now how will this resampled and merged data frame be used for creating buy and sell signals? This strategy will buy when the following events happen. The exact moment when the short EMA crosses above the medium EMA and when the close price of the current candle, which can be the 1 day, 4 hour, 1 hour etc. is above the resampled SMA. So in the case of the 4 hour strategy, the close price of the 4 hour candle should be above the 2 day SMA and the EMA crossover on the 4 hour should occur to get a valid buy signal. The sell signal is triggered when the medium EMA crosses above the short EMA. So in other words, the short EMA should cross below the medium EMA. And also volume should be higher than zero to make this a valid sell signal. By the way, notice that the earlier configured Bollinger Bands are not used for buy or sell signals. Now to make these things a little bit more visual, I'll open a chart on TradingView and add the indicators to the chart. Here you can see the 25th of December on the 4 hour chart. This vertical purple line is the start of the day. Now also in this chart you can see that the SMA50 on the 1 day time frame is very smooth. Now let's find a buy signal which is coded in the strategy for this bot. The close price of the 4 hour candle should be above the resampled SMA. And there should be a crossover of the short and medium EMA, which is over here. So this is a buy signal. And the bot would sell if the MA medium will cross above the MA short. So this is here. These are the signals the bot should act on, besides the ROI and stop loss of course. Now of course I've done a backtest of this strategy and as you can see on the screen over here, you can see that the 4 hour time frame indeed has the best chance to gain profit and keep them as well. At first sight the 1 hour time frame seems to be much more profitable with the backtest run. It has a profit percentage of 2939. 
And unfortunately, the 30 minute, 15 minute and 5 minute time frame did not show any results. I have seen this behavior uh, often and I think it has something to do with the updated dataset. So perhaps in the future I will try to use uh, smaller datasets for these time periods, for these time frames to see if they work better or not. Now back to the results. The 4 hour and 1 hour time frame score the same with my scoring method. So this time I will use the Calma ratio, profit pairs ratio and win rate here to determine which time frame has the best gains and the least chance to giving everything back to the market. And in this case it is the 4 hour time frame. Which actually is a good thing, because the strategy was also originally intended for this time frame. Of course, I would not be me if I didn't try to squeeze a little bit more out of this strategy by making use of the hyperparameter optimization function. But unfortunately, this time the optimization session gave overall results that I'm not happy with. Indeed, the Sortino ratio was optimized, but at a cost. And that is a little bit disappointing to say it mildly. Over the complete backtesting period, there was only an 85% profit, which summed up to a CAGR of only 12%. That's more than you will get on your bank account uh, with interest, but I expect more when trading crypto with these risks involved. Also, the win ratio, which is only 16%, is simply too low. The Como ratio says the same. It is only 0.4, whereas the original 4 hour time frame has a ratio of 1.51. Seeing these results, I got a little bit curious if the optimized settings for the average strategy, which I tested the last time, would provide better results to this slightly improved reinforced one, so I took the other JSON file and adjusted it to make it work with this code. And to my surprise, those optimized ROI and stop loss settings proved to be much more profitable. To find out why there are so many differences, I made a comparison between the exit reasons for these three tests. If I compare the exit reasons between the initial backtest, the hyper opted backtest and the backtest where I used the optimization file of the average strategy, then I see that in all three cases the ROI is the main cause for profits. In the original file, an ROI with a take profit of 50% looks to be the best way to earn nice gains. The exit signal is a pain and is also the main cause for drawdown, but at least you get to keep a lot of these profits. The initially optimized settings are not that optimal as you can see over here. The stop loss setting is getting hit too many times to my personal preference and causes a lot of losses on the initial and not so great winning trades. Psychological factors come into play here. Trading bots can take a lot of psychological stress for real life trading away. But if you check on your bot and you see that the strategy have so many losses, you'll be quickly thinking about changing algo strategies here. Then there are the exit reasons of the backtest with the optimized JSON file from the average strategy. This is just an example out of curiosity but it shows that the optimization session for some reason did not go well and provides us with suboptimal settings, even though we always think that it always improves the parameters for bigger gains. So let this be a lesson to us to always check these optimized parameters as well. To round this test up, let's see where this strategy ends up in the strategy league. Even though the name says it is a reinforced strategy, that does not always mean it is better. In comparison to its simpler brother, this strategy does not perform that great and with optimization does even a worse job. Maybe the additional check on the resampled simple moving average is its Achilles heel. It does have a higher profit, but also too many signals that gives more risk to losing trades as well. That is why the win rate is pretty low and also causes a higher drawdown in comparison to the top 3 algo strategies. Nonetheless, we have tested another strategy and we know a little bit more. I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment if you have one. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!